That's right, it's me, Scripter. How are you doing, folks? I'm doing great. Welcome, welcome to Hearts of Iron 4. Hearts of Iron 4 is the sequel to Hearts of Iron 3, logically, uh, no surprises there, by Paradox Interactive, as you can see. And it's a grand strategy game, as so many by Paradox, and it covers the time period from 1936 to 1948, focusing on World War II, the build-up to it, uh, the war itself, up until the victory, I'd say. Uh, it was released on June 6th, uh, 2000, yeah, 2016, not 1916, <laughs> 2016, so that's about, what, two and a half weeks ago? <laughs> and um, my Steam account says I'm about 20 hours into this game. I played the tutorial, uh, I played around a little with multiplayer with uh, Bendeline and Kami, and we had some fun so far. I still have no clue about this game. That's why this is a let's learn campaign, so we're going to learn together. I'm going to tell you what I know about it, and you can tell me in the comments what you know about it, what I'm doing wrong. That's how it works. Let's do single player. Don't have any game. We're going to create a new one. First thing we have to decide is if we want to start very early or right at the onset of the war, which they call Blitzkrieg. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> uh, or Gathering Storm. All right, we're going to start at the very beginning, so we have time to learn. As you can see by this fella, I'm playing the German edition, which uh, disallows me to show that face, that actual symbol you would usually see there. And if I'm going to tell you the actual name of this person or what this uh, symbol is all about, then I would not be able to monetize my YouTube videos, so I'm going to refrain from doing so. I'm sorry about that. That's how it works and I can't do anything about it. That's stupid, I know, but eh. You got it on screen there, you can read, right? We're going to play as Germany, or whatever it was called during that time. And we're going to start, 1936. So we're fascist. As you can see there, uh, sometime I'm, I'm going to uh, humor you with using the actual German names, like this right here, Nationalsozialistische Deutsche Arbeiterpartei, which is the socialist, national socialist, um, German Workers' Party, to be blunt and just translated word by word. Uh, as you full well know, if you've studied World War II in a school to any degree. Uh, we have the trade Bitter Loser, which gives us ideology drift defense of 50% plus. It's good, and we can create our own faction, which is nice. We're going to get into factions a little bit later. Uh, our organization has a buff, and our planning speed, uh, speed has a huge buff, which is really good. And that's what it's really about for Germany during that time frame. You know, they're the efficient guys, and they show that. They were all idiots at that time, but eh. Everybody can say that, like, nearly 100 years later. So, let's get going. Um, We're going to start right here. This is the map of 1936. As you can see, Germany is a little bit bigger as it is today. We have half of Poland here. We have the Danzig area. And Poland is somewhere in between. There's Russia over here. We have France, UK, everything you would expect from the World War II onset world map. This is basically how the world looked like after the Treaty of Versailles. We're going to play as a regular... Uh, oh, on regular difficulty, historical AI focus. What this does is it makes sure that whatever the AI can research, it will most likely research it in the way that it goes uh, conform with the historical facts. So, for example, if you play as, or well, if, if the AI would play Germany, uh, you have some features like um, getting Austria to join Germany getting part of Czechoslovakia join Germany, getting Hungary to join Germany, they won't switch this around. They won't attack Poland and afterwards try to get Austria in. So it, it will be on the timeline uh, that World War II was fought in. I'm not going to do Iron Man mode. Um, it doesn't really make a difference. Well, we play until we're dead or we won. That's how it works. Uh, playing on Recruit, as you can see, would give you a bonus here and there. I don't really want that bonus, otherwise it messes up the whole strategy you have behind it. We're just going to play on no bonus whatsoever. We're going to uh, work with the racial traits as we get them. Let's go. Ding. 
first thing I have to say, the music, the soundtrack for this game is awesome. While it is relaxing, <laughs> it doesn't calm you down when you're in the middle of a fight. I like it. Right, there we go. So, let's have a look at the UI first. We have our flag right here, shortcut Q. They have shortcut displays for everything. And as you can see here already, if you've played the game before, if you've watched other videos, this is a mod. It's the only mod I have, and the only thing it does, it is colors, uh, adds colors to those buttons. So, don't judge me, I'm not cheating, I'm just putting colors in here. <laughs> I like it color. Uh, if you click here or if you press Q, that's your political overview of the country. We have laws and government, research, production, military stuff. To change anything in here, we need a political power, 150 apiece. Some of them cost more, some of them less. Usually it's 150. Uh, I think, yeah, there's some here that actually cost a lot. And they do have other prerequisites that you have to meet before you can change that. Political power is up here. Get to that in a second. First of all, we have national unity. Um, we have a base of 90%, as you can see. Weekly change, none. So some countries like France will start out with a very, very low national unity. Uh, in Spain, for example, you have a civil war coming up. That changes everything. If you want to change your national unity up or down, there is a national focus. That is this guy here, which is a special research that you can do. Uh, and we get to that in a second, once we are through the UI up here. So, political power. We get plus three per day with this an awful lot. If you compare that to the US, um, I think they get plus one and a national focus research costs one a day. So they can either research or build a power. They can't do both. We can do both at the same time. Uh, most of the other countries, I think, get two or 1.5, something like that. So we get these done fairly quickly, which is good because they give, give us buffs where we need them. Then we have our manpower. We have 1.31 million men ready to uh, answer the call to arms if we need them anywhere. This is a figure we will need. You can see all the calculations in here, what our army strength is, what our navy strength is, uh, how much manpower we have, how much we have used, and whatnot. Factories. Uh, this will become important for some of these things, maybe, for some of these things, maybe. Um, for some diplomatic stuff we want to do, you need to have enough factories to get the country going. Factories are military, civilian and naval. Naval dockyards you can see, well, you can see the ports on the map, you can't see the dockyards on the map, and you can't see the factories at all on the map, because that's not important here. You can build any of these, as long as you, as you have space for them available. Each part of the country only can hold a certain amount of factories, which again, you can increase by national focus. Then you have your experience, which is Army, Navy, and Air. Um, you need these if you want to create new divisions and redesign existing divisions. So uh, if you have an infantry template which says, well, there's like four divisions of infantry, this is one infantry division. And you say, well, but I do want to put a signal company in there. I do want to put mobile artillery in there, and I want to have at least one tank in there. Each of these modifications costs you experience. That's what you need that for. How do you get experience? Well, fight or train. That's as easy as that. Not as easy for these, because if they don't have anything to do, they don't get experience. And you got your naval convoys. We're going to do some trades. Some of them are really automatic things. Uh, we need, let's say, steel. If we need to import steel, we need to put convoys to use to import steel. If we get steel from the US, for example, we need to ship that over the ocean, so it will cost us convoys to do so. Uh, we need to keep this up. Also, naval invasions, if eventually we want to go over and capture London um, from Normandy, for example, we need to use convoys to ship our troops. If we want to go to Africa uh, and not go the long way around, like through Turkey or something like that, um, naval invasions, convoys, that's what you need those for. So then, the buttons here. We come to those in a second. These are pretty much the same as here. It just tells us currently we are not doing anything and we need to change that. Let's start here. Research. We have four research slots. We can increase those, I think, to six or seven through national focus items. And we are currently, uh, through our limited export uh, law, where is it? Here. Uh, get a minus 1% on research time. That's what it shows us there. So it's showing a lot of information on a lot of screens. 
There's a lot of tooltips. I don't know if I have time to read them all, because then there will be silence on the video and you will sit there like, what's he doing? So um, be patient with me <laughs> if I'm doing stuff wrong because I'm not reading tooltips because I want to entertain you guys. Um, I might have a look at all those items in between videos. Then um, let's just start here. There's a lot of tabs on top here as you can see. So we have army, we have navy, we have air and we have general production. And then we have sub parts. We have engineering, atomic, uh, rockets, we have production, we have industry, we have construction. All of those are items that we could get a bonus on. For example, we can go in here and say, this is research time in general minus 2%. We are going to start off with this. It's one of the good things to have. Uh, we will then go down both roads, definitely. We are going to go in here. It's the first thing we need to do. This production efficiency cap means once uh, you start producing stuff, let's say infantry equipment, your uh, factories can only get this good at producing stuff. And this gives us a plus 5% at how good they can get. And good means fast. We want that. The faster the better, right? So, then construction. Construction speed. Yes, of course. As fast as we can, like I said. Do we need oil? I don't know yet. We will have a look in a second on how much oil we have. I am pretty sure eventually we want to have that. I don't think just now. So we have this all covered, we have this covered. This requires us to be at 1940, we're at 1936. Don't bother. If we want to do this, we have a penalty on doing so ahead of time. We are four years ahead of time, it will cost us 1500 days, which is what, five years, four years? Um, then we can as well just start in 1940, because it will end at approximately the same time. You can reduce this penalty through research. So, um, what are we going to spend our last points in? Do we want our doctrines to be researched? Uh, this is our air doctrine. We can choose between strategic destruction, battlefield support and operational integrity. As we are playing as Germany, this is already pre-selected and learned. Green means learned and yellow is can be learned next. And this um, striped gray in gray version means you can't research that yet. You don't have the prerequisites map. So what would we get here? What do we have actually? Fighter detection plus 15%, all right. And this gives us air support mission efficiency. So this is for support missions. It's not bad, but we're not at war yet, so we don't need that yet. Then we can research the actual um, planes and variants. So we do have the Heinkel 51, but we do not have the Arado AR, AR, German, AR 168, which is the carrier version. Well, Germany did not have that many carriers, really. They had one that was never finished. It was redesigned like six times. Started as a battleship, then was a carrier, then was a cruiser, then was a carrier, then was scrapped, then was sunk, then was um, lifted from the bottom of the Baltic Sea, I think, by Russia after the war, and then was used for target practice, something like that. Uh, that was the Graf Zeppelin. So... No need to go into this. If you start out as America, you have these, well, the American versions of them, including the carrier variant. Variant? Variant. Sometimes I get the pronunciation messed up. Well, good. We're not going to worry about this at the moment. We already have the 1936 version of pretty much everything except for the heavy fighter. They are good. They're not that good. You can produce two... Fighters for one fighter and two fighters are still better than one heavy fighter and they only really useful if you need long-range support So if you have your strategic or tactical bombers go in over uh, Northern England you need these because these won't reach otherwise stick to these just you know invade get closer and use those Naval well, Germany's Navy was not that good uh, It was mainly as it says here trade interdiction. So we're running uh, distractions by shooting convoys so it would be good going down here or here this is the u-boat varine this is the capital ship battleships and this is pretty much everything in between until you get to floating airfield we could try that yes but this is really more america than anything else 
Uh, so German chips. We do have quite a lot researched already. You know, that's the Bismarck. Hindenburg, which was never built. It was only on blueprint. And this H44, this was a beast. Uh, picture the Bismarck. I mean, everybody has seen pictures of those. And just double the length, pretty much, then you get this. This would have out-measured the Yamato bike quite a bit. So, not to worry. One thing to worry about is down here, transports. This is for naval invasions. We currently can use 10 divisions to start a naval invasion. The next one is already 40. Four times as much. We are going to go there as soon as we reach 1940. In Germany, we need mobile warfare doctrine, which is the whole shebang about Blitzkrieg. Yeah, we're going to do that. But to do so, I do want to have the technology first. Now let's see where we go. We already have quite a lot here. We're not yet in a time where we could use the Panzer uh, 3. Panzer 3. Um, so we are going to do something else before we get there. Let's just start over here and let's just increase our weapons and equipment. Gives us more defense, more breakthrough. That's good. Just take a flat passive bonus here. Research done. Let's go back to national focus. This looks like quite a lot and it is quite a lot. We have main categories here. Autobahn, Air, Army. This is our national stuff that has to do with our political situation and then we have the Navy. Um, we're gonna do this as soon as we can. We could do it right now. I'm not get interested. We're gonna get our infrastructure up. As you can see here, the Autobahn will add Infrastructure in Brandenburg, Hannover, Thüringen and Franken. Uh, infrastructure is something you need to get your troops supplied and all of that. I mean, don't need to tell you. You can imagine infrastructure, right? <laughs> so, oh yeah, it's middle mouse button. Um, we're going to work on that. Then, have that, have that. Diplomacy, there's nothing to do here at the moment. Don't worry. Trade. This is the six resources this game is working with oil aluminium rubber tungsten steel and chromium uh, we're currently trading chromium we produce four we export one we import eight and we have a surplus of ten so if we would not import these we would still have a surplus of two but we're not producing that much so far so i'm not going to cancel that trade at the moment whenever we're missing something we can just go here and say okay look we need oil uh, the US can give us oil, we want oil, and we trade away civilian factories for X amount of oil. So it's it's 8 per, I believe, as you can see here, 2 for 16. This button will set the amount we need. Currently don't need anything, I don't know why it's giving us 16. And then we can say send, and this would give away 13 convoys and 2 civilian factories, which are used to build military factories and all that stuff, um, to give us this oil available. So I'm not going to do anything here just yet. Construction. This is where we start building stuff. We can work on our infrastructure, which we're just increasing by national focus. So working on that would pretty much be useless because it would be overwritten afterwards. Uh, airbase. Wow, airbase. It increases the capacity of the airbases we have. As you can see here, this one can hold 600 airplanes. As well, as well. This one is 1,200. <clears throat> it's a different size. This is size 3, this is size 6. So we can work on this. And it tells us, yeah, we have 6 out of 10. If we click on this, we will increase this up to 10 out of 10, which I think is 2,000 planes. Uh, not just now. Anti-air. Well, there's no bombers coming in. We don't have any anti-air, so not to worry about just now. And we don't have radar research, so we can't do radar yet. Uh, as you can see, these all have their their separate limits so this one if you build something here and you have eight out of ten that doesn't mean there's only two out of ten left this one is a separate one and this one is another separate one which is cool it's different here uh, if you want to produce a military factory which produces the goods you need for war like tanks or military equipment of all sorts this is 11 out of 12 here right I can build a civilian factory, but that uses the same amount of space as a military factory. It's the same building, it's just one is producing shells, the other one is producing pots and pans, right? 
So we have to decide if we do need civilian or if we do need military factories. We currently have 32 civilian factories and if we go over here we will see that we have 40 military factories. So do we want to produce more military equipment or do we want to be able to have more construction done at the same time? Well, as we are playing Germany, construction is quite important because once we are going to take over half the world, we want to build there as well. And if we have construction power in our homeland, we can quickly build military factories elsewhere. Naval dockyards, not much to say about. You can't build any in the hinterland. You can only build at the coast. Um, this is, again, a separate thing, so it has nothing to do with these two, I think. Oh yeah, it does. 8 out of 8, so can't do anything there. Um, yeah, it increases your capacity to build ships, same as military factories, uh, just for ships. Synthetic refineries produce oil and rubber. We have quite a few of those, uh, I believe. They definitely pr uh, produce an oil and rubber. The oil research will increase the output of those we already have, so we're going down that road. Be sure we will. But we might not build more. They cost quite a lot. 8,750. This is only 3.6. Then again, if we build this for 3.6 and it costs 2,000 to convert over to this, or is this 2,000 to convert into this? That's not quite clear, because this would only be 5.6 if we build a military factory and convert it over to civilian. And not 7.2. Uh, the other way around, if it costs 3.6 and these 6 thousand to convert to a civilian factory then we are at nine something so it would be cheaper um to build it straight away for seven two right am i confusing you if i'm confusing you you should watch a different video because this is only going to get more complicated we are still at the easy numbers <laughs> this is paradox i love it this is way more complicated than master of orion but it's nice rocket sites I haven't done any research in rockets. Once we do, you know, there was one up here, Penemünde, um, the Vengeance Weapons, the um, V2 rocket, as the Germans call it, V2. Uh, nuclear reactors, well, you definitely need that in the end if you want to build nuclear warheads. So I'm not 100% sure if that uses the same space as everything else in here does. It would make sense to me. Yeah, shared buildings. State buildings, shared buildings, well, does it say here? It has its own number of building slots that is shared between these buildings. So if we max out everything, you see blue is maxed out. Um, if this whole thing would be blue, we couldn't build any more of these, even if we had them researched. Then you have the whole province buildings thing, which is a lot of defense. As you can see, this, or well, this is, well, a state, as you would call it. And then in this state, you have these different provinces. So if I wanted to build a land fort down here, for example, they have some. This is the Maginot line. Each province has a fully upgraded land fort here. So if you try to go over the river, bypass the land fort, be sure that these guys will stop you with near to nothing in manpower. They don't have to have much manpower as long as this fort is standing. That's why the Germans were never able to break through here and in World War II just overran the Benelux, Belgian, Netherlands, Luxembourg, Benelux, and went through this way into uh, France. All right, and down here is conversion. This can convert uh, these guys, civilian, into military and the other way around. So we already have construction speed plus 5%. That's good. Uh, not doing much. We do have some factories producing consumer goods and some factories producing tra uh, trade goods. 20% of our total number, that is determined by one of these. This guy, resources to market, 25%. Alright, so what are we going to do with Germany? We need more military factories. This is all the stuff we want to produce. We have 15 slots for factories to produce one good. We can add more goods. So if we want to have like 30 factories producing infantry equipment, we can just Put another infantry equipment item in this list and max it out. Good, let's start on this. We want to stockpile some stuff to get our army up to speed very, very soon. 
So I'm going to increase this. You can see that takes away available factories. We need a lot more of that. We do want towed artillery. I do not need many light tanks. We're going to replace those as soon as we can. We need motorized a lot of it. Want to get our fighters and our close air support up to speed. Tactical bombers I'm not that interested in currently. We do not produce any convoys, which is a bad thing, so we're going to add convoy production. I'm getting into this whole thing as soon as we're actually doing something in there, not just, you know, click and drag and that's it. Um, three per month, yeah, that should be fine. There's one heavy cruiser in production. If we go like this, it just continues to loop. Am I interested in that? No, not at all. You go away. Do we need destroyers or German Zerstörer? It's the 1934 variant. No, we don't. Go away. Submarines, I'm gonna keep. On infinite loop. Because that's just, just what, you know, Germany is good at. I'm gonna research the best one, swap this, and then we're gonna do that. For these, as these are actual units and not just some type of production equipment for units, we're going to have to set where they are going to go. These are our ports. Um, click to deploy. This is going to go right here. As it says now, Visa Ems. That's that area around, around uh, Wilhelmshaven, that province. And convoys, they are not an item on the map. They are just a number on top of your screen. So they are just stockpiling and used whenever and wherever. All right, that's that. We're at 40 out of 40. And as you can see by the uh, gray um, pictures, icons, whatever you would call them, uh, as soon as we get more military factories available, these slots will be filled because we've pre-selected them. And they're going to start on top. So we get the motorized up to 10 first before we get this up to 5. That's just how it works. I do not think we have anything to exchange here. It looks good so far. Yeah, stockpile because it's not being used. Otherwise, it would say here, like it does here, needed 720 for upgrading. Alright, so we have some uh, divisions that are lacking 720 tanks in total. Excuse me. And this is being worked on. 280 squadrons are missing fighters to get up to full strength. Again, we're working on it. Good. How was that? Recruit and deploy. This is where you recruit out of your available manpower uh, whatever kind of division you would like to have. You have infantry, uh, you have tanks, you have the famous or infamous uh, SS division, which is the elite of the infantry. It's uh, motorized infantry, as you can see here. We have artillery, infantry equipment, motorized and support equipment. Those guys were designed for Blitzkrieg to accompany the fast-moving tanks and deal with any infantry so the tanks could take care of uh, buildings, infrastructure and, well, enemy tanks. Then you have the Gebirgsjägerbrigade, which is the Mountaineers, and you have the Cavalry, uh, well, it's written different in English, but, you know, it's Cavalry. Um, are we going to do anything here at the moment? No, not this time. So, what else? Free civilian factories. Yeah, we do, because we have no building plans yet, so let's do some building. I do want to get more military factories, because we do want to produce all that stuff. As we are going to get bombed from over here, in the end, I'm going to move all those over here. And I'm going to use the tooltip here and say, shift click, get this up to full power as soon as you can. I do not think that we will need anything else over here. If we want to bomb Britain, we will do so from over here or even from France once we have it, so we don't need rockets. Um, nuclear reactor, well, we might put some over here in the heart of Germany. Uh, oil... We don't need that yet, and we can upgrade before we redeploy. Naval dockyards, doesn't matter, we have quite a few. I think we have enough, right? Well, we could use five more here, but it's not really that important at the moment. We're producing two submarines a year. Once we go here, it's at 4.7, 5.25, well, it's 0.5 per. Yeah. We have 200 combos already. Let's just go down a little here. You see this auto filled in. Uh, we're going to take care of that, but we don't need them just yet. You can't do everything at the same time. 
So these are producing four here, three here, five here. That will take some time. It will use all the available factories. See, 15 or 15 are here. One is here. That's the 16 we had. The rest is building other stuff. Uh, trade and all that. Does it say here? Consumer goods, 15. Import, one. So these are the 16 remaining to us. First thing we want to do is get this up to max percentage working for us, which means we need to work on uh, this going over there as soon as we can. Can't do it yet. We haven't even started passing time yet. And I'm pretty sure we won't. <laughs> Not this very first episode, but we're gonna get there. So, now, buttons up here. This is army. This is the overview we've been in already. Once you click that, you get your whole army. Everybody under your command. You can shift-click these guys. Once you release your shift key, these will be selected and they will be shown on the map. We have one there, we have two here. And one is over here. That's the four we have selected. There's a lot of information here which we'll be going through soon. Not just yet. Uh, they don't have anything really to do. Does it matter if they have anything to do? No, not just now. We're at peace. Everything is fine. They are fully trained. Not much else you can get here. Navy gives you a similar overview. It just... You know, it shows you your navy. <laughs> what else is that to say? We have four different uh, navies currently under our control. 12 ships here, 10 ships there, 6 here. This is the submarine school. This is the submarine flotilla. This is our Baltic Sea flotilla. And this is the main navy, the Kriegsmarine or war navy. We have the heavy cruisers, the Panzerschiffe Deutschland, Admiral Scheer. And we have cruisers and we have destroyers in here. Eager looks and whatnot. Alright. Not doing anything with these guys just now. Again, we're at peace. There's not much we need to do. As you can see, it gives you a slightly different view now. The um, the, the water, the, the oceans are more highlighted than the land. Which is good, of course. It's a lot of information. We're going over that, I think, next episode or maybe the one after that. So, insufficient resources. With all the stuff we're currently producing, we need different items. As you can see here, it tells you out the side. It's red when we don't have it. It's six when we have... In, uh, it's, it's six, yeah. It's white when we have enough of it. So we do have these six... Um, what is it? Steel? We do not have these... Zero rubber <laughs> or two oil. Well, it might just say that we have two, but we need more. Yeah, four more units are required. This is six more units. You see the summary on top. We are lacking in 17 oil and nine rubber, so we're gonna go to not logistics, trade. Where's trade? There's trade. I always mix these two buttons up. I think these two should be next to each other actually, because they're pretty much the same deal. Um, they handle with your stockpile or the lack of it. So it says here, surplus of aluminium. It says aluminium, but you know, it's aluminium. There's no way around it. Even in German, it's aluminium. So, there's nothing we need to do here, but here it says needed. I think they should do this red and green so that you can see it straight away. Otherwise, you know, it's not that visible. We need this. So, click on it. Say, yeah, well, you know what, let's just take it from the US. How many do we need? Three factories, 24. We need 17, so in increments of 8, 24 is good. Send that. And now we're getting it. Once we start passing time, it will jump and it will tell us we have imported 24. And now we're at plus whatever. And there's our rubber. Same deal. We get that from the UK. Yeah, why not? Support our war effort. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll use factories currently constructing buildings. Of course it will. So now if we go back here... Now it's not one tied up in imports, it's six, so we just lost five factories. So it's not 15 and one, it's just 11 and zero. So this will take longer. You know, we have only two thirds of the factories available we had before, so it will take 30% longer. That's just the way it is. So once we get these all going, the rest will be civilian factories, and then we get more military factories by conquering other territories. Right, that's the quick overview of that, quick overview of this, and we still have down here, which is way too far at the corner, because whenever you try to hover over these small ones, they should put them here, and the bigger ones over there, you move the map. So that's our default map mode, it's the army overview. 
We have the Navy overview, which you've just seen, and we have the Air overview, which highlights the different strategic areas where you can do uh, air missions. When you click on them, you can highlight them separately, and this works completely different than anything the others do. So we're going to go through them, yes, one at a time. What I'm not going to do is toggle the day-night mode, because if you go on fast speed, this is just flashing as crazy, and I do not want to cause any epilepsy or anything like that. Don't care about the rest. Allied battle plans. Yes, I like to see what my allied comrades are doing. And yeah, unit icon color. Wow. What a difference, right? So now this is basically green is us and gray is everything else. We're not at war, so they are not red because we're not at war. Um, if we do this, then yeah, blue is France. You know, the, the flag is blue and this is red and this is gray or whatever. And this is light green and... Uh, hmm. I don't care what they are, I just care if they are friend or foe. So we're gonna keep it like this. I think, for the moment. Might change that. The air map, as far as I've seen from other YouTube videos and from my own experience, I can say yes, it is true, uh, causes quite a bit of lag. Um, the sprites of the uh, thousands of planes flying around. So I hope we can live not using it too often. Factions map mode. Well, we are the Axis, everybody else is just everybody else. The Allies are just the UK. Uh, this is going to change as soon as we get start getting into the war. Diplomacy. What is our standing with the different other countries? Well, there's, there's nothing really to say about this at the moment. Resource map mode. Nothing to see unless you zoom in. Then you can actually see that... Come on. There is four steel available here, so if you control this, it's a state or a province? That's a province. That, the big black outline is the state and the small ones are the provinces. If you control this, you get that steel. No need to trade for it. Same up here, 36. Of course, you do want to have that, right? Same as this. So yeah, we're going to France. Get to France. Da -da -da -da. Yeah. Resistance we only need once we actually have some resistance. You only get resistance when you are on enemy soil and you've conquered it. Uh, states. Well, if you really want to see the states, well, here you are. Highlighted very nicely. And supply areas just so shows you the supply you have. 5 out of 100. Yeah. Infrastructure, how good is it? Highest fleet naval base available here. All of that. We're going to get into this in a little more detail once I actually figure out what they do. <laughs> like I said, it's a let's learn. <laughs> Haven't really used any of those modes that often. They they switch, you know, on their own when you actually do some stuff like go in here and then select this and now you're in naval map mode. Otherwise, haven't really used them. So, we're Germany. Um, we start on 4 or 5 in terms of speed because there's nothing to do in 1936. Really nothing. Let's go actually go five you can use plus and minus to get through there and as you can see our troops are doing nothing which is really a waste but eh. so stop it right here let's see what we have done no divisions in basic training yeah i know we are not producing any divisions currently nothing here we are stockpiling we're getting 3.7 units of artillery per day which we are producing right here there and we currently have a 38 in total. And our balance is plus 3.7. So if we had um, units that needed this, it would be deducted on a per day basis. So we could see, okay, we're producing 3.7 and we're doing a balance of plus one. So that means we can still train some more, even though we have all those units that need regular updates and upgrades. It's good. Infantry equipment, you can never have too much of that. It's always good. Also, we could do land lease later on and just take this equipment and give it to somebody else to um, help in the war effort. And uh, we're going to do that. Not producing any bombers. Yeah, that's looking good. Really good. We do need to get started on some, some army here. So, what do we have? We have Mountaineers Brigade. One whole Mountaineers Brigade. That's awful. Alright. Don't need any specialists just now. We're gonna take you. You no, know, the other way around. 
I wanted to deselect everything except for these. Is it really that complicated? Sometimes it is. So if I click on this, I only get that one. That's not what I wanted. I want you. Yes. And you. And I want to give you, create an army and give you a commander. We're going to sort by skill and we're going to take the best one. It's a Panzer Brigade. Yes, we're going to take Erwin Rommel. Of course. The Desert Fox. The Wüsten Fox. We have some more real good tank commanders and we're going to use them. So, this guy can hold an army up to the size of 24. Currently there's only 4 divisions in there. Everything's fine. I have no orders. I do know that. Uh, you're not going to get any orders, except for maybe exercise, but since you're already at level 3, which is the highest experience level you can get, there's no need to exercise, which is a pity really, because we don't get any army experience then. Uh, you guys are going to go over here, because there's support. As soon as that civil war in Spain starts, I'm going to move you down there to get some army experience. So, that's the first thing we've done. And we're going to leave it at that. That video is already 40 minutes long. Um, if we want to get into some real action, we would have to make this video like an hour and 30 minutes long. We're not going to do that. We're going to stick to the 30 minutes per, 25 minutes per, somewhere in between there. Just for this first one, 40 minutes actually sounds good. Because you want to see some stuff, right? Otherwise, I've only just showed you the colors of the map and that's it. Good. That's our start. That's the world we need to conquer. <laughs> one more thing politics for the US they are currently democratic there's a little flicker of something else in here which we do not know what it is we are going to boost our party popularity fascists and we see if this can persuade them to create a fascist party that will have 50 or more percent and bring them into a civil war and not have them join the allies that would be quite nice so that's the first thing I want to do. We've just done that. We could have done that right at the start of the game. We lost just, what, 10 days? Doesn't matter. Alright guys, I leave you here. And I'm going to see you back next time for episode 2 of Hearts of Iron 4. That's it for today, folks. If you like the video, like the video. Subscribe for more. Leave a comment if you feel like it. Don't forget to enjoy yourselves. See you soon.